pull off the victory. I think Zach, listen, I've covered Zach Greinke since the moment he mm. came into baseball, when he quit baseball, when he came back to baseball, when he was in Kansas City. When you expect Zach to pitch a gym, he might give up five runs in the first. A night like tonight, where people think Zach, who struggled this postseason, the moment might be a little too big for him, I think Zach's going to be outstanding. The key for the Astros is, and I know Chris and I were talking about this, agrees with me on this, that this October, it's been their bats. They're hitting 185 with runners in scoring yeah. position. They've just got to get a couple key hits. I don't think they're going to win the series anymore, but I don't. Uh, really? Yeah, but I don't think they're going to get swept. I think they win tonight to force a very interesting game four on Fox Saturday evening. Nick, I think the young nationals might struggle, even though they have the home crowd. That atmosphere is going to be electric. And them not having the experience, I do believe that the Astros, because of what they've done the last several years, it will help them tonight get through it. All right, let's move on here. We'll get to the Browns and the Patriots in a second. But first, look, Rockets, Bucks, Giannis hunting down James Harden with the vicious chase down block. Oh, there we go. See, you were, you were asking who else is in the chase down block category other than LeBron. Giannis went and got it. Oh, immediately. This is the best rundown guy in the NBA. Not history, but he's working on it. He's young. He's up and comer now. High flyer. I like it. How about this, Hawks Pistons? Alex Len misses the layup. John Collins is there for the putback slam over Andre Drummond. All right, I, I watched this whole game. Thank you, NBA League Pass. These Atlanta Hawks are frisky now. John Collins, interesting player. Trey Young, second most points in his career, 38 for the young fella. Hawks could maybe possibly be a playoff team out east. Hey, Nick, you told me about Trey. I was a little suspect about his yep. size, but, man, he's going to be awesome in year number two. Yep. Oh, my Ooh. goodness. Australian Pro League, former NBA player Aaron Brooks misses the layup. A future NBA player, LaMelo Ball, is there. Clean up that miss. You see how long he is, see? Kid's a true 6'8", even with the new NBA regulations on how you measure him. He's a true 6'8". I'm so happy that he's getting his form back over in the Southern Hemisphere. And it takes a long time for that growth spurt for him to get used to the coordination and everything. All he needs is a decent jump shot, Nick, and he's going to be all right. Thursday night football, Washington taking on the Vikings. Stephon Diggs hauling in the catch on the sideline with the classic toe drag. See you like this here? Yeah, he just knew I was in the building. He was just trying to show off. I talked to Thielen before the game, told him I was so disappointed. He's my favorite player and not playing. Diggsy told me he was going to pick it up after three weeks ago complaining. Him and Kirk Cousins were able to work it out. Vikings still on a roll. Diggs has been on an unbelievable streak. At the very beginning of this game, had a big play. He fumbles the football. After that, he really didn't make many mistakes. Uh, more dominant than the score would indicate win last night for Minnesota. Yes. Vikings get the win 6-2. They are uh, in the, on the season right now. Browns will be tested Sunday when they head to New England to face the New England Patriots. So Baker and this Cleveland team facing the best defense in the league. The Pats are huge 11 and a half point favorites according to Fox Bet. Second largest spread on Sunday. See any chance the Browns can pull off the mighty upset against the Patriots? Yeah, there, there hadn't been an NFL game. I've been doing this too long to be like, you know something, this team doesn't have a chance. All 32 teams do have talent, but these are the things that are going to have to happen. They're either going to have to score on special teams or they're going to have to score two defensive touchdowns. You can't rely on that offensive line, given the pressure that New England has put on every team the first seven games, they're going to need some assistance. And Chubb. Chubb is the MVP for the Browns. If they're able to get it done, he's got to touch the ball 25 times, milk out that clock, try to go through the heart of that New England defense, force them into man-to-man -man coverage, and then Landry and OBJ on the outside can make some big plays. But that is the challenge. You have to shorten the game. You have to win time possession. You have to, Baker has to have a clean game, no turnovers. But that defense has to create several turnovers. And I want to see a couple scores. And Nick, you challenged the guy. I used to do a segment when I worked for another network called Where You At? When a good player used to disappear, we used to put like the spotlight on him. And Miles Garrett, the defensive end, who got off to a fast start last couple weeks, not the productivity. If he is on number 12 in Tom Brady, the chances for the Browns are real 
realistic. But this would be one of the biggest Browns wins in a number of years, Nick. So, Chris, I have not obviously been doing this as long as you, and I am not afraid to say. Yeah, Man, but this, you've been covering it long enough I not to I, be stupid. I, right, but, but I still <laughs> am one that will occasionally say they got no chance. This game's over before it starts. <laughs> it, 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 defensive scores, non-defensive scores, lightning strikes. But that's not how I feel about this football game. I mm. think the Browns have a viable path to victory. I think the Browns, there, there's a few things that have to be noted. One is the schedule, the Browns had a bye week. The Patriots played on Monday. You're never going to have a bigger discrepancy in time to prepare than what you have in this game right here with Patriots on a short week and the Browns having the week off. That's first of all. Second of all, the Browns offense, if you look at it on a per play basis, is a top eight offense in football. They're seventh in the league in yards per play. So why are they in outside of the top 20 in every other main category? Because they keep turning the ball over. Because they don't they don't get into the red zone enough. They don't score enough points. They don't be they don't accumulate enough yards because Baker's been a turnover machine. Obviously, they have to play a clean football game. I don't think what the Patriots did against Sam Darnold and the Jets, I don't think you can do that effectively against the Browns because Beckham's there. If you go cover zero, you if the Browns are smarter than the Jets were and mm -hmm. say, we're going to get the ball out immediately, Beckham is such a great route runner. And I would argue, and Chris, is, we've talked about this off the air a bunch, where he is maybe the best in the league is at his release point, at his break yep. point in the route. You. Man-to-man -man coverage with no safety help can turn a four-yard slant into a 70-yard touchdown. So I don't think Belichick's going to put the defense in that position. But you also mentioned, Chris, the most important player in the football game, Miles Garrett. That the Browns mm -hmm. defense, other Nick Chubb as well, but the Browns defense has to stay in the backfield on Tom Brady. They do those things. I think they could win this football game. Also, this is without question. No matter what we think of the Browns, this is the best team the Pats have played this year, other than the Buffalo Bills. And the Buffalo yes. Bills were in that football game throughout and only didn't win the game because they had a pump blocked for a touchdown. So I. I would be surprised if Cleveland won, but it wouldn't be the monumental upset that I think the point spread indicates it would be. I, I think, yeah. go ahead, Susan. Go ahead, Jenna. No, I was gonna say, to me, I think a lot of this does come down to Baker Mayfield, and we've been talking about it. And you say they're just gonna have to play a clean game, obviously. Well, that's not a given, the way this sure. team has been. Penalties, the way Baker's been holding onto the ball. Belichick knows that the minute Baker has to rush out of the pocket or the Baker, the minute Baker is, is sort of throwing on the run, he's really inefficient. Isn't that going to be the key for them? I mean, making sure that Baker is uncomfortable throughout the game? There is no doubt, Jenna. Nick and I both have uh, very valid comments and everything, but... There, there is no path to victory unless Baker Mayfield. We're trying to move it other ways because we can't depend on Baker. The turnovers have really hurt this defense. The defense also hadn't had their starting corners be able to play so they can put a lot of pressure on the opposition. But Nick, back to your point as far as what the Jets, it's a classic example of New England. If you watch the Jets game, in the Browns game, they're going to do something totally yep. different than what they did in the Jets game. You can't play zero coverage against wide receivers that the Browns have because you get too many yards after the catch. If you make one guy miss, then you could be off to the race. They didn't have any respect for Sam Darnold and him seeing Ghost and the wide receiving core of the Jets. They do have respect for OBJ and Jarvis Landry and Baker Mayfield's overall arm strength. So watch how they rush the minimum, drop seven or eight trying to force Baker Mayfield into making mistakes. But if that is the case, obviously Baker's going to have to, for the first time all year, not turn the ball over. He's six games, all six he's had a turnover, half of them he's had three turnovers. Maybe they can survive one turnover from Baker Mayfield. Against the best defense. Well, maybe, but they certainly cannot survive a multiple turnover game, which is why I put an enormous amount of the pressure on this game on Freddie Kitchens. Listen, man, Freddie Kitchens got this job. He got elevated all the way from running backs coach to offensive coordinator to head coach. Why? Because of his game planning, because of the rapport with the offense and with Baker. This has to be a Nick Chubb centric game plan and when no five step drops, certainly no seven step drops, boom, 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 out right. quickly. Neutralize the pass rush that way because that's, that is going to be the way the way Baker has a chance to play a clean football game. But I, ooh, the Browns have been disappointing. 
but and they have not lived up to my expectations, certainly. But they still do have the talent that we talked about in this offseason. The Patriots have not played talented offenses. How many guys on the Browns would be the most talented player, uh, skill position-wise, on any of the teams the Patriots have played? They play, when they played the Giants with no Saquon. I know Le'Veon Bell's on the Jets, but aside from that, when they play Washington, like when they play Miami, how would, Jarvis would be the best guy. Odell would be the best guy. Chubb would be the best guy. So I do want to see this Patriots defense, which is on a historic run against a team with viable weapons and how they respond to it, that'll be very, to me, instructive on how dominant this Pats defense is going to be moving forward. Yeah, one little small thing that I want to watch, Jenna, I know you and your family, you watch that New England, watch them closely, but they made a couple roster changes this week, something that we should watch for. Josh Gordon put him on injured reserve. We don't know the reason why. We know they're hurting for wide receivers. Michael Bennett, trade him to the Dallas Cowboys for a conditional sixth or seventh round pick. Now, these are dynamic players, and I know that Bill Belichick thought that, they, he, that these players would be in their plans this year. I'm not saying it's going to to alter where they are. I just think it's something that we should watch. Muhammad Sanu trying to come over, acclimate to Tom Brady in New England. To me, that's a lot of moving parts for a team that's dominated the NFL for 20 years. I just think it's something we should just watch moving forward. All right, see good stuff. We'll take a break. Coming up, that Michael Bennett to the Dallas trade, does that help the Cowboys? And if so, by how much? That's next. This is First Things First.